My fiance and I have a dog, Jasmine. My parents have a dog, Sunshine, and they love to play together. I was trying to use Midjourney to put them into a painting, and using the normal methods, it kinda just seems like there's no good way to do it. I could try to use the editor to mash different generations I made with OmniReference together, but the style of the two dogs is really hard to get looking the exact same, with lighting included, and the combined image just looks disjointed. I could also try to use both Omni references in the same image. But when I did, I had so much trouble making each dog the right size. And when I write prompts to fix their sizes, I start losing consistency, especially for Jasmine because she's tiny. And she's just not prominent enough in the image for Midjourney to do a good job generating her accurately. And Getting close to right never seems to be good enough, because when I take the image into the editor and try to fix it, OmniReference is not supported, so everything I do just seems to make the problem worse. The same thing happens if I try to use retexture to fix the style all at once. The entire, like, character consistency just falls apart. This sort of situation seems to come up a lot in Midjourney, whenever I have a very specific idea that I'm trying to achieve. Midjourney is the best tool out there at creating my characters and letting me control the style of what I'm generating, and I like the look of Midjourney images more than I like the look of anything else I can get. But when I try to put that all together, it felt like consistent characters in exactly the style I want while I control every detail I care about was a far off dream. But not anymore. I've been aware for months about OmniReference and version 7 being in development. And knowing what was coming in the pipeline, I had a very specific idea about what else would be needed to get over this hurdle and truly control generations to that level of accuracy that I and so many of you care about. And over the past few months, I've spent hundreds of hours designing and developing an online tool to get that done. I know I normally give things away for free, but in this case, what I made is a product that I'm going to sell. If you choose to buy it, thank you so much. If not, that's totally fine. You should still keep watching because I promise to still teach you everything you need to know about how to accomplish this kind of control without it. It's just that my tool simplifies that workflow and makes this whole thing easier for you to do. You might actually recognize this method I'm gonna talk about. It's adapted slightly from my video about highly specific characters, like the angel here with purple wings wearing a key around her neck that needed to look very specific. In essence, we're teaching Midjourney to achieve consistency to our vision, not just by using a reference in the prompt, but actually by bringing that reference into the image we are generating. The term I use is a temporary reference layer. And actually, today, I recommend bringing two references of the thing we're trying to add. That way, built into what already exists, we have a bit of diversity in pose and style that can ensure it matches your target location. What this looks like practically is, I have a target scene I want to put Jasmine and Sunshine into. Generating this can be done with a pretty simple prompt in one shot. Looks like an oil painting of the scene I want to put them in. Then, you probably already have these, but you'll also need two references of something similar to your target style that is accurate to your characters. You can get this with OmniReference. We don't have to worry about lighting or brushstroke weight that was causing problems earlier, just bare bones. If you're trying to generate an oil painting, these references should be oil paintings. Now, we need to figure out where in the target scene Sunshine is going to go. We take just that section and put references for Sunshine on either side of it. In the editor, I erase where I want to put her, and then upload an image reference that is three Sunshines side by side. What this does is it lets Midjourney get the character likeness from here and here. It gets the style we want from what's left of the target scene. It even can understand a little bit about light direction in this moment. And it gets the composition from the image reference we uploaded, helping make sure Midjourney actually puts in the third dog, the third version of Sunshine. Now, if we didn't erase anything from the very borders of the image, we have confidence that this part of the generation, that looks great by the way, will fit seamlessly back into our target scene. If you do this manually in the Midjourney editor or in something like Photoshop, it can be a pain to 
align and keep track of exactly where this goes and make sure that it fits without any breaks. But my tool takes care of all that for you, that file management. It lets you organize your references and images into projects, select a part of your image, apply the references as a temporary layer on either side, and create that stitched image reference that you're gonna use as an image prompt so that when you go back into the mid-journey editor, all you have to do is erase the spot you're trying to put Jasmine in now, and with your prompt and your reference in place, you can click generate. And I get a really high quality result because Midjourney had everything it needs to accurately generate her within the context of your scene. It turns out beautiful, and because my tool kept track of how the selection I made fits back into the scene, I don't need to do anything more than download this image and check it back in, in place of my collection. I can preview the before and after to make sure it looks amazing. And once you're sure you like it, click Accept Changes and you have a finished image. Sometimes I take it from here back into Midjourney and you get the chance to make a couple last minute adjustments. And when I'm done, I click Upscale for a high resolution version and I really believe in this workflow. And you can follow the same steps to reliably put almost anything into any scene. It doesn't need to be a character. It can be a building or an object or even a cool magical effect. And you can put it in exactly how you want it. If you only have one or two images to make, it's probably doable without my tool. But if you have a larger project or complex scenes, I promise this is going to unlock a ton of possibilities for you. I've never done a Patreon or anything like that. So purchasing this is going to be the best way to support me and what I do directly. My goal is for your support to make it possible for me to continue to develop and improve this tool and give you more and more features all in this one place. My mission is to give creative people a path that helps bridge the gap between what they want and what AI delivers. For those of you who want to support me while I get there, I'm offering a great deal right now that I'll never offer again. On our annual plan, I let you lock in a price forever that's 50% off the normal price. This is only for the first 500 people who sign up, so don't miss out. I'm planning to host a bunch of live streams over the next few weeks for anyone who has any questions after they sign up or just wants to learn how to use this more deeply. I'm just so excited to let you guys get your hands on this. I really think you guys are the greatest community in the AI space right now, and thank you so much for being here, watching to the end, and helping me fulfill my dreams of being a creator who gets to make things like this and bring value to you. If you're interested in trying out the tool, check out the link in the description, and I will see you in the next one.